Ah, so here we are. We're going to be getting on with the electronics now. So we've got our uh, dodgy Arduino all loaded up with Marlin firmware. Um, sort of, well, half configured, at least it should get us started. We've got the dodgy ramps, uh, which I haven't done anything with yet. This is completely as it comes. Uh, to begin with, I'm just going to leave it with the dodgy polyfuses, the dodgy MOSFET, um, because actually right at the beginning, I'm not even going to be um, using the heated bed at all. I'm not going to be printing anything, so I don't really need it. Um, so as I mentioned before, this kind of stage, I don't know yet how I'm going to finish off the wiring. And the primary reasons why I don't know yet is because I'm not entirely sure what power supply or power supplies uh, I'm going to end up using. And I don't have any way, a you know, nice way of, of you know, housing these things. I'm not using the standard Prusa thing because I'm not going to have it on the actual frame of the printer itself. Likewise with the roll of uh, filament, I'm not going to put that on the frame itself either. Uh, basically this is kind of wibbly wobbly enough as it is. And putting you know mass high up on it I don't like the idea and also it just make it kind of neat to just keep the filament out of the way uh, keep these out of the way somewhere uh, what I will probably end up doing is mounting the whole printer on a base a level base um, yeah and then I can basically make some kind of um, housings to put the electronics in and uh, the power supply or power supplies so to begin with, this little beastie here is uh, the bench lab power supply. Um, so I'm going to be using that sort of to begin with. I do actually have some other power supplies knocking about. Um, the end goal really here is that I want definitely want the heat bed to be 24 uh, volts. Whether or not I go the whole thing with 24 volts, yeah, maybe I don't know yet, <laughs> and that's kind of the problem. Um, to begin with, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do everything. 12 volts to get things up and running um, just to yeah because these electronics really aren't of the highest quality so yeah we'll just do things as they are intended to be so basically yeah, I've got a bunch of wires here I uh, need a load more wires there too we've got some components and uh, we need to connect the things together so this video now is going to be well mostly me just cutting <laughs> crimping and uh, sorting things out. So we'll do that as a time lapse. Right, well, that's the wiring done, and it's a right old rat's nest. So what I had to do really is because because I don't know where I'm going to put all of this stuff yet, this the ramps and the Arduino and all that sort of thing. Um, I've had to make all the wires pretty long um, because, well, firstly, I don't know where they're going to end up, and I'd rather do that now, make them as long as they're ever going to need to be, hopefully. Uh, and it's easy to cut them down, right? Um, and secondly, because they're going to be sort of sitting floating around on this bit of um, plywood here that I've uh, hot glued <laughs> the uh, ramps and Arduino to. Um, yeah, I just need some extra length. So quite a lot of the work really was extending the cables and um, yeah, just sort of figuring out where they're going to go. As with all temporary solutions, there is lots of hot glue involved and a whole bunch of tie wraps. Um, but yeah, it'll do for now. Everything's kind of, like I said, really temporarily rooted. Some of this, you know, some of the stuff around the frame is just literally chucked on there to get it out of the way. Um, it has been quite a useful exercise, though, which will allow me to know a little bit better where things are going to go when I do the final thing. So I can prepare for that a little bit. One thing that made it a whole lot harder than it should have been, really. Well, actually, not that bad. But um, for some reason, I I can't find my small crimps. The um, I managed to find medium and big crimps but not the small crimps that you need for doing the little um, DuPont style connectors oh you don't want to be doing those 
crimps by hand uh, with <laughs> some pliers and soldering irons and stuff like that. Fortunately, there was only probably about, I don't know, three that needed doing because um, I used the RepRap 14 wire wiring set. Well, I used some of it anyway, uh, which have DuPonts on there already. And uh, just to extend them, I soldered that onto the uh, cables which were hanging out of the steppers, all of which were pretty short apart from the last stepper I bought for the extruder, which was OK. So, yeah, um, it's all pretty normal, basic, boring, yeah, easy stuff. I will pick out some highlights of stuff that um, I had to look out for, uh, just in case that's of interest. For a start, all of the steppers as they came uh, to me, mm, sort of, um, were wired the wrong way round. Yeah, so when I say came to me, actually all of the steppers, apart from the extruder one, came without connectors on them uh, but because the color coding is the same as the four strip dupont connectors that come in the rep rap wiring set obviously i have to wire them up uh, with the same color to the same color because yeah it would be dumb not to because <laughs> if you only see one end and you see another end you're going to assume that green is connected to green if you can't see the connection in the middle where it isn't so um, basically what i did is i measured the uh, resistance between the four wires and found the coil pairs just by finding ones which actually you know show some sort of resistance and not a, a open circuit and uh, on the ramps board they need to be um, in pairs yeah that doesn't really matter the polarity doesn't really matter but they definitely need to be in pairs so that you take one matching pair i.e a pair of wires which have a resistance between them i think it was about nine ohms can't quite remember anyway a resistance between them and they need to set set sit connect next to each other in the um ramps board so there's four wires obviously you've got the two top ones or the two bottom ones or if you're looking at it left to right on the ramps and you just need to make sure that um, two which have a resistance between them go next to each other and obviously the other two have a resistance between them as well and they go next to each other this was all completely wrong or all, all, all wrong all wrong so yeah had to do that uh, i did have to find out sort of dig around just to make sure that the um, limit switches or rather what pin out on the limit switches there are actually on this particular ramps which you probably won't be able to see here uh, because there's too much rubbish in the way um, on this particular ramps here it is marked slightly on the silk screen it says something like s negative plus and um, all of the limit switches that i had i think well yeah we're ignoring the probe for a minute the probe for a minute but all the limit switches are green uh what are they green black and red and uh, green is a signal black is negative and red is positive and uh, so yeah you just need to line those up with the silk screen on the board one of the things i was expecting to be uh, a bit of an issue was the um z-axis pro proximity sensor whatever you want to call it um i thought i bought a five volt one because i do seem to remember having problems finding a five volt one um but i thought i did find one turns out i didn't <laughs> um yeah, you can get them from AliExpress or something like that, but I, obviously for reasons explained before, I didn't want to get anything from AliExpress. Um, so turns out the one I got was a six to, what were they, six to thirty-six volts or something like that. Um, so I was wondering if that was going to be a bit of an issue. I had a plan. Um, I was going to feed it twelve volt power and use a voltage divider to get it back into the ramps down to the five volts for the signal. And uh, yeah, I have the values of the resistors needed for, for that voltage divider, which I'll put on the website. I'm not going to bore you with that here, just in case you ever need it. Um, it turns out I didn't. I just stuck it straight in. Well, I tested it with the power supply and uh, it made no difference whether you put uh, run it off of 5 volts or 12 volts. You know, the sensitivity of the proximity was exactly the same. Um, it triggered fine uh, and it uh, triggers low so you get five volts out you put five volts in you get five volts out once the uh, metal body gets to within about two mil it uh, pulls it low down to zero ish volts and uh, yeah it was exactly the same with five and twelve so in the end i didn't have to bother with the voltage divider 
um, just wired it into the board and the wiring on that is uh, what is it it is black is the signal blue is the uh, negative and brown is the positive so it goes into the uh, Z minimum connector on the ramps board um, so yeah that's that again same same silk screen same um, wiring config as the uh, limit switch is well it effectively is a limit switch and uh, yeah so that's all good so the only other thing I really had to double check was um, I knew that the uh, part cooling fan went into D9 one of the actual main outputs of the ramps I wasn't quite sure where the um, hot end cooling fan went turns out it's just well I think anyway uh, what will work for sure is you just stuff it into the 12 volt um, input from the power supply into the ramps I just stuck the wires for the uh, for the hot end cooling fan straight into there so as soon as you apply power to the whole thing the hot end cooling fan is running up and uh, the only other thing is <laughs> before you put the stepper drivers in don't forget to put those jumpers in there's a little bag of jumpers <laughs> that come with the board and uh, I almost forgot it was only because, well no I did forget actually it was only because just after I pushed all of the um, stepper drivers in I found the little bag of jumpers and thought oh yeah they're supposed to be in there somewhere so don't forget that because uh, yeah it probably won't work too well without those on the stepper driver side of things um, I basically needed to just take a file to each end of them and smooth them off you know obviously <laughs> nothing drastic but um, basically smooth off the PCB and a little bit of the uh, plastic jumper legs just uh, to get them all to fit right next to each other in the ramps board other than that um, yeah it all went okay so yeah that's it sort of wired up temporarily uh, next up we're going to apply some power and uh, hope it doesn't blow up and uh, then sort of get around to doing some of the I'm not sure whether the calibration is the right word but finalizing some of those configuration settings in Marlin so once we powered it up we can test a few things like the motor direction limit switches blah 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 everything that we need to do before we can hit the print button so yeah do that next <laughs> 